Hello. Um, so for everybody watching, can you please give us a short introduction of uh, your, about yourself and what you do? Yeah, thank you very much, Sueda. My name is Matthias Ulrich, and I am professor of microbiology at Jacobs University Bremen. I'm uh, representing the uh, one of the favorite majors for students uh, on campus here. That's a major biochemistry and cell biology, which is essentially a life science major or the life science major, uh, which really uh, uses molecular biology, but also biological techniques and so on. I've been a professor of microbiology at Jacobs University since 2002. So now this year for 20 years. Um, and uh, I was one of the pioneering professors. The first ones came in 2001 and I joined in 2002. Wow. So can you give us a short summary of, or like an overview of what your research is about and what you're researching on? Yes, my pleasure. Uh, so as a microbiologist, uh, you are in a very lucky position because microbiology is literally everywhere. There's very few things like volcanism and other stuff which are not deeply involved with microorganisms, but we can find microorganisms in the sea, we can find them on plants, we can find them in our body. Uh, we have more micro, uh, uh, microbial cells in our body than we have human cells. So in consequence, uh, as a microbiologist, you have the choice uh, to what to work on. And we decided to work on something meaningful uh, in food microbiology. So we are studying, for instance, the fermentation, as we say, of certain food products, what kind of reactions take place, uh, which microorganisms are involved, and what are the classical features. We have a model crop in this context. It's cocoa, because we are collaborating with a big uh, chocolate company on that. So that would be one topic, for instance. As microbiologists, you also need to work on tools to fight uh, harmful microorganisms, for instance, with antibiotics. And we have currently a huge problem on this planet uh, that we develop more and more antibiotic resistances. And in order to fight them, we have to look for novel antibiotics. We do that and we look for it in, for instance, rhododendron plants and in other uh, systems. So in order to then understand how the antibiotics work, we need to study the microorganisms again, what makes them, uh, what, what kills them. And that is one major topic. The third major topic is, as I already said, microorganisms are found in the ocean that since Bremen is very closely um, located to the North Sea and to oceans, uh, that we also deal with uh, marine microbiology in this context, my research team collaborates with the Max Planck Institute for Marine Microbiology, which is located here in Bremen, and also the Alfred Wegener Institute. It's a Helmholtz Institute for Polar and Marine Science. And we are investigating how microorganisms, again, bacteria in the ocean, interact with algae in order to uh, compensate for, for instance, atmospheric carbon dioxide uh, overload. So carbon dioxide is uh, consumed by microorganisms in the ocean and we try to understand how we can improve that process and in order to also of course fight global warming. So as you can see food, uh, climate and diseases as a microbiologist you are well off with hot topics. Yeah. Well that seems to be a lot of uh, the parts of the world that you're covering in your research. What is your uh, particular favorite part of your research that you like to work on? Yes, there, there is, of course, a, um, a, a favorite issue, and that is the issue that photosynthetic organisms like plants or algae, how they interact with non-photosynthetic. Why is that so interesting? Uh, all our um, life uh, processes on Earth uh, occur in cycles, the circle of life, and you have, you've heard about that. And that, of course, does not only refer to lions in the savanna, but it also refers to uh, all our microorganisms and all the compounds. And I find it extremely intriguing to work with host microorganism interactions. Since I did not really like uh, working with animals um, and I cannot really see blood, I decided to do the green part. So that is uh, what is, uh, can be summarized in all these topics. That sounds great. So for 
uh, students who want to join your research group, uh, uh, what are some of the typical tasks that they would have to work on when they're in your group? Yeah, that is definitely something important here at Jacobs University that students, undergraduate students in their second year and particularly in their third year will have the chance to work in our uh, research laboratories. So they get hands-on experience with instrumentation, but also with technologies. So usually um, uh, undergraduate students join us in their fourth semester, so in the spring semester of the second year. Uh, they come and they assist, for instance, bachelor students uh, or uh, master and PhD students in their individual projects. They would start with relatively simple routine techniques so that they get used to microbiology, to um, sterile working. Uh, most of uh, the BCCBs or all BCCB students will have already ta taken the microbiology lab course at that time, which takes place in the fall semester of the se uh, second year. Um, and uh, as a consequence, they can start doing routine work. They also would have to familiarize themselves with the topics. Uh, so they will get research papers to read. They will also present um, what they have understood about the research papers, uh, which usually come from our lab, what they understood about it, what is the main research question, so that they can be prepared, so to say, for later on work in the third year in form of a bachelor thesis. So uh, what are some of the requirements that you would want uh, from someone who's applying to be a part of your uh, undergraduate research? Yeah, well, that, these are very basic uh, requirements, like, for instance, being disciplined, punctuality, um, keeping uh, a commitment. Like, if, if you get the commitment, you come on a Tuesday afternoon, then please also come on Tuesday afternoon and don't think about, oh, I can do something else. So discipline, professional behavior, I would say that is. Now in microbiology, it is particularly important that one is aware of the problems which one can have when working with microbes. So you can get infected, for instance. You, can, you, you must not have open wounds. You have to tie your uh, uh, hair and stuff like this. This is all things which um, uh, our undergraduate students learn. Uh, so they are sort of like prepared for their later professional careers already in the second year. So do they need any kind of previous knowledge or a specific, do they have to be from a specific major to be a part of your uh, research? Well, we have in, uh, in the curriculum of life sciences, of the different life science majors, we have a group of life science majors, BCCB, so biochemistry, cell biology, but also two related sister majors, which are medicinal chemistry and chemical biology on one side and chemistry, biotechnology on the other side. So students from those majors all take the same first year courses, so so-called choice courses. And uh, those choice courses are, for instance, general biochemistry and cell, general bio, cell biology, but also organic chemistry. And uh, they would be required for us to start working. Yeah? So a student who is studying international politics um, will probably have a harder time uh, to grab all the things which one needs to know. But that doesn't mean that we can't also have interdisciplinary uh, projects uh, where, for instance, we talk about the, uh, the route of um, cocoa beans from the farm to the factory or to the refrigerator and where uh, global economic management uh, students, for instance, or other from other majors might also contribute. But in the um, early uh, career undergraduate research, you need to have a basic and a sound life science education. That's <clears throat> okay. So, and for the students interested, can you tell them how they can contact you to apply to join your uh, research? Yeah, the very easiest way is, of course, to come during class or after class and say, I'm interested in, in this. So, or, or try to get the the individual one-to-one -one, uh, 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 discussion. You can also send emails, that is absolutely fine. Um, but uh, usually, uh, uh, since I'm teaching um, microbiology and also plant metabolism um, and microbial pathogenicity, I usually already get an idea about which students uh, might become interested in this. You know? And then 
So email or direct contact, that's fine. So is there anything else you would like to tell uh, everyone who's watching anything more about your research? Yeah. Well, what I can just say is that uh, for those who still think about whether they should uh, come to Jacobs University or not, this is a marvelous and fantastic place for me as a professor to, uh, to teach, to work, to do research on. And uh, we, just like my colleagues, uh, and uh, I would like to, uh, um, how can I say, to, to start the enthusiasm among yourselves so that you understand that there's something meaningful you can do in your life. And that can be a lot of fun. It can be advantageous. Think about it that next week, for instance, I will go on a research wrestle together with earth and environmental science students. So we, we use the facilities of the Alfred Wegener Institute to take samples from the North Sea. And that it can be quite advantageous, very exciting. Then we go to uh, other countries, to tropical countries to, to do sampling. Uh, we visit hospitals and so on. So all this can be very rewarding. And um, that's why you should consider studying biochemistry and cell biology at Jacobs University. I think you've almost convinced me to change my need to biochemistry. <laughs> hmm. Thank you so much for talking with us. And uh, it was really, really nice to talk to you and learn something about a major that is different to mine.